March the 5th, 2000. Carrier, Mississippi. Fifth? Yeah. March the fifth, two thousand. Two thousand. We're in uh, Sunday afternoon. Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Near uh, east of Carrier, Mississippi. East of Carrier, Mississippi. A little got yeah, due east, just about. North of Picky, Mississippi. And, uh, you have to get them Hotel, yeah. Well, we looked at it. We figured out where we are here, and that's Aubrey and Jimmy Rose. Well, <laughs> Mr. Aubrey James Chip. Yeah. Well, and Sidney Rose. Sidney. No, no. What am I saying? Rose Jimmy, Lee. Jimmy, Jimmy Rose. Rose. Jimmy Rose. Rose Lee. Jimmy Rose. Can you squeeze that hand? Can you? How are you doing there? Give me a little squeeze. Just a little bit. Do it again. Yeah. You need to practice that more. So that left arm is the one it won't roll. Yeah, left yeah. arm is the one it won't do. Yeah, since she had a stroke last year. And she didn't get to the doctor for 24 hours or more. They didn't get her any treatment for it. So, <clears throat> but when she had two units of blood in January, first thing she did was squeeze my hand. It helped, huh? That's when I knew the blood did some good, because she squeezed my hand. In fact, she coughed and raised her arm up like that. You remember doing that? Mm -hmm. Have you done it anymore? No. You don't can you, know? Can you try doing it now? Pick it up. Come I on. see it moving. Come on, hard. You just need a little down. Dr. Shepard. Dr. Shepard. That's right. Dr. Shepard. Dr. Green. Dr. Green. Dr. <clears throat> so you ready to go move to Fayetteville with me? Yeah. Where do you want to go? You need me. I do? Yeah. yeah. I do need you. Or maybe you and I want to move in this house. I don't know. <laughs> but I guess I'm going to have to clear your room to get it ready for you. So you can come up there. Make D become a nurse. Yeah, that, that'd be good for D. She'd yeah. be a good nurse. When's the last time you saw D? Long time. Yeah. She's a little bitty girl. Mm -hmm. she, she was thir oh, thirteen. <clears throat> so how old is she now? She's thirty-one. She'll be thirty-one on the nineteenth. Mother will be eighty 18. on the fifteenth, and D will be thirty-one on the nineteenth. And old man Aubrey will be something like I was gonna say, Halloween. Aubrey will be 60 in this year. 60 in uh, Halloween, yeah, that's right. And Eddie will be 60 in September. September 29th. 29th. Mom's birthday was the 10th of September. Yeah, mommy's been gone. Mommy's, when did mommy die? 70-something. 70 70-something. 70 well, you know, Jimmy Rose, my mother died summer a year ago. She, she was, was 91. Ooh. Well, she lived a nice. She did. Life. Ninety-one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was while she was staying with my brother in uh, Conway, just out of Conway. The last time I saw her was Not January of, year that, ago. of that year. Yeah. Yeah, pick it on up. That's it. Practice making it do something. Yeah. Pull hard on it. And see, in my family, we have Charles and Leslie. Charles is 37. Wow. Leslie will be 36 this year. Oh. Yeah, I remember when she got to 30, and I thought that was She crazy. has, well, Charles and Betsy, that's his wife, they live in Florida, and he has 
a little girl by the name of Rachel, who is 11. And then they just have a brand new baby that's six months old, 11 year difference in them. That's Elise, another little girl. So they got two little girls. And Leslie, who lives with, in Baton Rouge with me, with her husband, Griff, has a two and a half year old, uh, Rosa, who is named for her great grandmother on Linda's side. So there's Rosa, Rosa's grandmother. Rosa, uh huh. My and, mom was Rosa Lee. Was she? Well, and then they are expecting another little baby this October. So that'll give them two, and the other one will have two. And we're, we don't know what this one is yet. You know, a lot of times they know ahead of time. But we don't know this one yet. At least I don't. In fact, I didn't know when they knew, and they wouldn't tell me, or I told them not to tell me. Huh? I wanted to be surprised. And I was. And she's a precious little girl. And if we have time today, I'll show you some videos of her. Okay. That's the only one I have. We can use this camera to do that. So maybe we can see a little of that. But I don't have any of uh, uh, Deidre. She's, uh, gosh, I hadn't. I don't think I've ever videotaped her. Uh -uh. Probably not. No. We got some of her singing stuff. She sings really nice. Yeah. Getting late, maybe too late to take the photographs, but we'll try. It's outside the house. Here's the house again. I'll do that again, like this. Dana's car. Roof line, very impressive. Jonathan, back of the van. Various and sundry stuff out here. Walk up the hill. Jonathan's working there. Oh, man. <laughs> end of the road there is the entrance to the property from the highway from Lumpkin Road and then we turn around the other direction down the fence line there well can't quite see it but in the distance that way far down there about a quarter of a mile well half a mile there's the house from above not so easy to see what's what here. Unfinished upper part. There's the house below. The top of the house. It's currently just a big porch. And that's a room full of junk. Which could be a bedroom. So road that goes out, comes to a fence line. This is the fence line I was talking about. And there far in the distance. Slumpkin Road. There went a car by. Which is on the north corner of the property. Then we turn around. 180 degrees. There's the house in the distance. Corner of it. And down the fence line this way. It's not a usable road, but there in the distance is the access point from the other side. The normal access point. Grinder. Cool. 
Got down. Well, just break out with hives or whatever, huh. you know, terribly. So one morning, or he called her, she wanted to bring the puppy back. He was going to give it to me. He paid me $300 for the puppy, was just going to give it back. You can't. Well, I said, well, I'll, I think, I, I mean, I'll be able to do it today, but I will try to get your money back, you know, for this puppy. So, so, uh, he brought the puppy over in his pickup right in the seat with a nice seventy-five-dollar crate, and in the back was a an igloo dog house, seventy-five hundred dollars, and shampoo and all kinds of wonderful things, and a bunch of fancy toys that average ten, fifteen dollars for cheap, including that with lights up. Yeah. And so he left all that stuff. And I had had a caller who didn't get a puppy because I'd run out. And I called her and I got a hold of her husband and after two or three hours sold him the puppy and took got the money for the puppy. But I said, look, that stuff you brought, you could take back the stone floor so it hasn't been touched. The Eagle House was not dirty. It had yeah. been sitting there unused. And uh, he said, no, you keep it That's for your dollars. Yeah. But I got to use 300 you pay me back. Mom's done that before. Grandma, excuse me. This is March the 8th. Night, you two guys. And Aubrey is visiting us in Baton Rouge. You want to come and Rosa me? is performing. Turn the handle. And Rosa is fishing for the first time in her life. She may be the first person to fish in this room. That's right, she certainly is. <coughs> Push the button. <clears throat> and she's losing interest. Yeah. Come here, sweetie. Let her mind. Rosa, boy. But you got one. Rosa, come here just a minute and then you can go. Okay. Come here, we're going to go. I know Don't show me your shoes again. Can you dance in these shoes? Can you dance a little bit? They're so pretty. Come here. <laughs> yes, no. Oh, you got to get in your toy box? I think it's on that bottom shelf. She said, wow. Turn it around, show Grandpa what's inside. Let me see what's in the playhouse, Rosa. Show can me the inside. Around so Papa can see you. Oh, oh yeah. Papa here. What have you what are you doing Grandpa? with it, Rosa? What are you doing, Rosa? Oh boy. Turn it off for a while. 